everybody, welcome back. So we're going to be talking about rabbits, and we're going to be talking about the economics and preparedness attributes of rabbits that I think that is at least an interesting one to look at, because this is something that can be done on any scale, whether whether you live in a house in the suburbs, shoot, even if you live in the city or live in the country, this is something that is definitely doable. And so I want to bring this forth into a common sense template for you guys to understand. And so the first thing I want to talk about is why rabbits are so unique, okay? Rabbits are unique because they have more per gram, more protein content than cows, right? So they are incredibly efficient, and not only are they incredibly efficient, but they are incredibly nutrient dense, okay? So that's one aspect. They are very quiet. They don't make a lot of noise. Um, so that's great. They're very docile. They're very welcoming, right? They're very highly accepted. I, I haven't seen any HOAs or city ordinances or CCNRs that would prevent somebody from having a pet rabbit. I just, I, I've never seen that. Maybe you guys can show me those templates. Me personally, I've never seen those templates. So that's another great attribute to look at and to, you know, to consider. They have large, they produce large uh, litters, you know, between 7 to 12. On average, people get 9 to 10, 9 to 10 rabbits. Having a litter of 10 rabbits is not, it's very, very, very common. There's a lot of uses from a sustainability aspect for rabbits. Everything from their droppings are just high quality fertilizer for your garden. I mean, there's literally steroids for your garden. Um, they're prized for their meats, they're prized for their, for their meat, they're prized for their pellets their pelts. So they have a lot of use from the sustainability market. And so the real idea is how do I invest in rabbits and make this work economically for myself and also from a preparedness standpoint. And so based upon those, those attributes of an animal that's easy to feed, can eat grass, right? They, that's what they do. They eat vegetation. You can easily feed them on grass. Um, people do this all the time with tractors, things like that. So they're easy to feed. They produce a lot. They're extremely nutrient dense. They're very, you know, overall they're widely accept accepted. So like I said, how do you make this make sense from an economic standpoint? Well, I'm going to show you a template that we use here on, on our homestead. And so I want you to I really want you to take take this on board and see if this something is something that it can be that can be useful for you. Okay, so first we're going to talk about just the ability to make money off rabbits without breeding them. Right, so you may be interested to find that people actually pay for rabbit droppings. I mean, up to fifteen dollars a bag of rabbit droppings. So. Let me go ahead and pause the video and uh, include some some sources for you here. So as you can see, people pay for bags of rabbit droppings. And why is that? Because it is literally crack cocaine for your garden, so to speak. It is a great way to introduce lots of essential minerals and nutrients into your soil. It's a way to build your soil up. It's considered to be a cold fertilizer, so you can put it directly on your plants without burning them or hurting them. I mean, it is just a amazing source of um, plant food for your plants. So without even, you know, without even breeding them or growing them for meat or any other attribute, there is a market for for the droppings. And not only can you sell it, but if you have a garden and you are just trying to make your garden the best garden parts possible, this is a very cheap, cheaper than buying fertilizer. This is a cheap way to ensure that you have a renewable, sustainable way to keep your garden at tip top shape. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about, obviously, and it goes without saying, is without eating the rabbits, what can you do with them? Well, you can definitely breed them and you can breed them safely. You know, and you can breed them for people that may want to buy your rabbits or you can breed them for an actual meat processor. So let me leave some empirical data for you 
here so you can take a look at that. So there you have it. You guys saw the Craigslist ad for people wanting to buy meat rabbits at $1.65 live weight. And then you saw another photo of an email that I received inquiring about my rabbits. And so if we look at this, let's just look at worst case scenario here. Because there's also another scenario here. There's two more scenarios that we're going to talk about. But let's just talk about lowest end, you know, lowest economic standpoint for yourself. One litter, one litter can easily produce 10 rabbits, right? And the rabbits, if you have a meat, meat rabbit variety like the Californian or the New Zealand, I have the New Zealand Blues, you can grow them out to five pounds live weight in just eight weeks. So in eight weeks, in that time frame, you can easily produce two bags of rabbit fertilizer. So at $15 a piece, as you saw in the, one of the last uh, earlier photos, at $15 a piece, that's $30 per eight weeks just in rabbit droppings that you're, that you're selling. Plus, at $1.65 live weight for five pounds for 10 rabbits, you're looking at $82.50. So $82.50 if you were just to sell it directly to a processor. Then add the $30 for the droppings and you're sitting in the, you know, $112.50, you know, standpoint just in, you know, just in profit for one litter of rabbits. And obviously if you had multiple litters, you know, take that 112. So let's just, you know, drop it down to 100 because let's say, you know, for if you're, you know, if you're feeding sustainably and everything else, just overall feed costs or whatever so you know go ahead and take uh, 1250 off hundred dollar profit per litter like I said especially if you're feeding them sustainably already I mean that's not difficult it's not difficult to do so you're making a hundred dollars profit just by selling them to a processor and that's if you were just not trying to advertise not trying to do anything like that you are simply just trying to breed them raise them give them to somebody that you know is a safe bet because those processors are extremely safe bet. They will definitely take your rabbits because they are in it for the, for the free, for the free market, you know, the meat market, uh, capitalistic system, right? So just at the lowest common denominator of doing an absolutely safe, sure thing bet of raising them for a processor, a dollar 65 pound live weight, and on the low end, you're talking about $100 profit per, per litter. Now let's talk about if you actually did So there you go. You saw a Craigslist ad for rabbits that I feel like if you've watched this channel, you've probably seen before. And in this Craigslist ad, they are selling pedigree New Zealand rabbits for $50 a piece. So with just this much work and uh, taking, you know, five minutes of your time to copy and paste a ad into Craigslist, you could potentially be selling rabbits for $50 a pop or $30 a pop or $25 a pop, $10 a pop, whatever you want to sell them for, you can sell them on Craigslist. And so you'll definitely get some, you know, you'll get, you'll get some income that way. And all the ones that you can't sell on Craigslist, guess what you can do? Those processors that want your rabbit set, $1.65 live weight. So, like I said, this is another way to profit off your rabbits by just putting in a little bit of work. And we're still talking about all safe bets. We're not even talking about having to do the dirty work of culling your rabbits or harvesting them yourself. So, from a preparedness standpoint, from an economic standpoint, this makes sense. This allows you the ability to make an income and be prepared without touching your base income because most of you guys already have, you know, I'm sure you guys have jobs, you guys have your nine to fives or you have your other primary source of income. So this is a way to pay for preps. This is a way to get the things that you want without touching your primary income. 
So you make your primary income irrelevant, and this is a way that you can invest in your future and have a surefire way to make income per litter. And the more rabbits you add, like I said, the more surefire income you have because you can do this much work, copy and paste a Craigslist ad, sell the rabbits at $50 a pop, which isn't hard. Obviously, that's my Craigslist ad there. And I live in a, you know, I live in a very, you know, um, low income, lower income area, right? So the area that that county that I'm in is considered to be very low income for the state. And I'm able to make $50 a pop off of them, no problem. So like I said, you don't have to sell them for $50 a pop, but you can sell them for pretty much anything above $1.65 live weight, and you're gonna be making a profit higher than selling it to the processor. And all the ones you can't sell, you have a surefire, you have a surefire arrangement with the processor. So as you can see, you can, you know, at the very low end, you can make hundred dollars a litter, or if you can sell all 10 rabbits for, you know, $50 a pop, you can make $500. So realistically, if you're just using the model that I have, anywhere between a hundred to $500 per litter, it's not a bad gig, not a bad gig at all. So there you have it. I'm just trying to give you guys something to look at that is outside of just the meat rabbit option. And let's say, I mean, outside of the, you know, harvesting and harvesting them yourself. Now me personally, I think that that's still an option you should think about, but this is to just those people who just, who can't do that. You know, those, these are the, to those people that just don't have the stomach for it. Um, or don't want to take a risk if you live in suburbia or if you live in the city or where, wherever it is. Personally, I think this is a, you know, I think harvesting rabbits is a great food source. And if it not, and if not for you, for at least, you know, dog food, cat food, that kind of thing. Um, like I said, it is a great way to do all three, you know, make money, be prepared and put, put food in the freezer, meat in the freezer. But if you're just looking at it purely from a monetary standpoint, I mean, you do have options with the meat rabbits. And like I said, you do have the ability right to take advantage of the fact that they're docile they're easy to raise they're very very cheap to get into you have no joke um, markets available that are wanting your rabbits they're widely accepted so i think you know it goes it goes without saying at the end of the day with minimum effort you're gonna have a consistent renewable income source food source pelt source, etc. So you're going to have a constant, consistent renewable source. Um, and when you, when things break down, you want to build up. That's what the producer mindset's all about. And being a producer is going to help you support localized markets. So it allows you an avenue to work on sustainability, preparedness, marketing, all while generating income, food, and other resources. And you're going to be helping your local community as a whole because you're going to be able to produce localized pasture raised food for the masses so you know you're making money and you're doing a great thing for your community and your localized um your localized food market as a whole so those are things that i would encourage you guys to look at you know i think that it's very easy to be a producer you can be a producer anywhere you're at whether you have a few backyard hens that you're you know producing eggs or you know you're breeding rabbits for you know generating a healthy, sustainable, you know, revenue for yourself. And if you feel so, you know, with minimum effort and maybe one day you'll put some meat in the freezer as well. So there you have it. Hope you guys liked the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. As always guys, long live the Republic.